whatever your life situation and wherever you are in your spiritual journey, we are so glad you're here. We're dedicated to changing lives for God and Christ. So if you're online or maybe you're on site and want to get a taste of what our messages are like, well, you're in the right place. From Houston, Texas, welcome to Bible Way Fellowship Baptist Church. Good morning, Bible Way. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. So I want you to do. I don't even, I, I want y'all to go ahead and get started before I get started. So I just want you to take some time and appreciate God your own way for all that God has done for you just on this week. If you got to thank God, if you got to say, God, thank you for all that you've done just this week. Has he not been just a great God to us? Amen. Amen. God, thank you for bringing us here. Y'all, it is Youth Sunday. Amen. And it is Rep Your School Week. You know, I did finally graduate from Texas Southern University. I said, finally, it took me a while. It took me a while. <laughs> Academic probation twice. <laughs> but man, I see some other schools. I see PV in the building. Yeah. I see Wiley in the building. I see some of our, some of our Bay Area schools. I see Pearland in the building, amen. But all in all, we all are, one, he, are here to rep one thing, and that's Jesus, amen. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I was listening to a song. Uh, I was listening to a song um, over there by James Fortune. Um, and it kind of just spun me down this little spiral with Jesus for about 10, 15 minutes. And the song was called Light the Way by James Fortune fe featuring Israel Holton. And it says, light the way. I don't want to be without you. I just want to be where you are. That's when it's good or when it's bad. I just want to be where you are. I think Taryn Wells says in the hills and in the valleys, I just want to be where you are. Paul said it like this. Paul said, I found out a secret. And whenever I'm in abundance or suffering need, no matter what, there's one thing that remains the same. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And see, it's something about being in the presence of God. Is anybody just sitting back in the presence of of God before when you're just sitting there and you're reflecting on who God is and you're in the presence of God. Amen. Here's the thing. David said it like this. This is Psalms 27. It says, the Lord is the light in my salvation. And because he's all that, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. What in whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2, when evildoers come upon me and devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. But then in the, in the midst of that, he says, with all that being said, there's, there's one thing. There's, 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 there's one thing. Verse 4, there's one thing that I need. If I can just ask God for, for one thing, Y'all see that up there, that, 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 that one thing, if I can ask God for that one thing, and God, if I can ask you for one thing, is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Because whenever I'm in the house of the Lord, 
now I can gaze at the beauty of who God is. I can gaze at your glory. I can gaze at your perfection. I can gaze at your peace. I can gaze at your comfort. I can gaze at your wisdom. I can gaze at your provisions. I can gaze at your love. I can gaze at your mercy. I can gaze at your, at your forgiveness. I can gaze at your blood. I can gaze at your blessings. I can gaze at all these things. And not only can I gaze at it, I can begin to meditate on just who God is. Amen? So that's what I want us to do. Team Choir, can you come at this top? That's what I want us to do. I want us to just celebrate today being in the presence of our God. Amen? Let us pray. God, I come to you right now, Father, just thanking you. God, I come just thanking you, Father, just for bringing us here on this morning, God. God, you've given us the opportunity to worship you, Father. You've given us the opportunity, God, to glorify you, Father. And, Father, if we were just to pause and reflect, God, you just ain't just started being good, Father. You've been good for a long time, Father. God, we can go back years upon years, Father, when you've been in the blessing business in our life, God. And, God, you allowed us the opportunity to be in your presence. Father, you have allowed us, God, to sit in the presence of who you are, to lay at your feet, Father. And God, I thank you for that. Because God, it's in your presence, God, when we begin to just reflect on just how good you are. So God, let us celebrate today, Father, and worship you just for who you are and being in your presence, Father. We love you, God. We thank you, Father. God, bless the youth on this morning, Father. Bless all those youth, Father, that's going to come up here, Father, and let you use them, God. Bless the youth, Father, in the sanctuary, God. Continue to wrap your arms around them, God, as they go into those schools and out of those schools, Father. Protect them, God. Father, we love you, God. We thank you, Father. We worship you, Father, because you're good. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, Father. Amen.
Makes me wanna shout, makes me wanna holler. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will be reading scripture, to, scripture today from Colossians 3, 12 through 17. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teachings, and ad ad admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in in word or deed, do all in name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Thank y'all. Good morning, by the way. I will be reading or I will be saying a prayer today. If everybody could bow their heads and close your eyes. Dear God, I want to thank you for everybody reaching the church today. And I also want to pray for Traveling, traveling Grace back. I want to thank everybody that's here and through the screen for joining us today and helping us have another successful week of prayer or week of worship. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Donovan Carter, and welcome to Bible Way Fellowship Baptist Church, where our senior pastor teacher is Dr. Ivory L. Varner. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. I would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone present and to those of you joining online. If this is your first time visiting us, and if you are searching for a place to worship, please know that it's, that's our mission here at Bible Way to be one with God, to, to make disciples of Christ, bearing fruit for the kingdom. Welcome, enjoy the service, and have a happy Thanksgiving week. Man. Look, if you ain't welcome after that, go home. Bye. See ya. <laughs> this ain't the place for you on today. Sorry. Man. That brother got some in him, huh? Man, shout out, brother Richie. Shout out, uh, brother Gooden. Man, them, them brothers was on it, huh? Man. 
HD, talk to him, man. I thought this was on it. Hey, man, and in case y'all don't know, we ain't done. We going high in worship, man. Can we just thank God for our teen choir as well? And now, oh my gosh, I get a chance to introduce. They won't let me be a part of them, but I keep campaigning. Let me, just let me do something. Let me do something. Let me hold the mic. Let me do something. But y'all, do me a favor. As a matter of fact, I want y'all to do me a big favor. I want you to stand to your feet. And let's bless these young, these young people right here. Y'all, it's the Bible Way Fellowship Baptist Church Angel Choir.
Amen. 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 Can we just thank God for the angel choir again? And I want to really just, I really want to uh, show some extra love to the angel choir because they've been planting seeds for a long time. For a long time. They're not new to this. They're true to this. I want to show you this. If you were a participant in the angel choir at any point in your life, stand. If you were a participant, I see you. Look at that. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for Loretta Tigner and her team for all these years. Thank you. Amen. All right, if our deacons can come forward at this time. Y'all stop it. I'm... jacket up open your jacket up talk to him man show him some man these old school players right here these old school players right here man you know, respect them OGs talk to oh man I, I could swear we prayed before we came out here come on bring it back to me come on spirit <laughs> let me get okay I'm sorry y'all it's offering time <laughs> It's offering time, y'all. Amen. Thank God for the opportunity to give. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians, that he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purposed in his own heart. Not grudging or under compulsion because our God, he loves, he appreciates a cheerful giver. Amen. Our deacons are standing here as a representation of an offertorial period. We do not pass the offering trays, but there are receptacles around the sanctuary. If you have a physical gift and you're online, if you have a physical gift, you can bring that, or excuse me, an envelope, you can bring that envelope to the right outside of our church office. There's a receptacle where you can place that offering in. Quick point of reference, if you are giving online, thank you for giving online. However, at this time, for the next day or two, um, the online giving is, uh, we have some technical difficulties with that. The church is resolving that. So if you want to give online, just hold your gift. Uh, I'm sure they'll send some communication out to let you know that it's back up and running probably somewhere around midweek. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, I come to you right now, God, just thanking you for the opportunity to give, God. Thank you, Father, for just gifts that you've been giving on to us, God. And God, I pray, God, that you will move on our hearts, God, to joyfully, Father, and excitedly, Father, give back onto you, Father. We love you, God. We thank you for what you're doing with this local body, Father. We thank you for what you're doing uh, in this community, Father, and bless this church, Father, to continue, God, to progress your kingdom agenda on this side of glory, God. We love you, Father. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Deacons, thank you. Amen. All right, y'all, we got some telling y'all, man. It's a lot of celebrations here. Uh, we have some people here that graduated from Prayer View A&M University a long time ago. So long that we got to honor them. <laughs> Education existed then. 
and it existed now. But we want to shout out because they, in so many ways, laid the pathway and they were inspiration for the next generation, the next generation, which eventually led to me, which led to others. So thank them for that. So uh, there's four. There's four that we want to honor. Uh, and first, we want to honor Brother L. Ray Dudgeons. If you can stand. I was gonna flash that thing. Flash that thing. Patched up and matched up, I see. Flash that thing. All right, secondly, secondly, oh, what, he's an Omega? Okay, well, shoot, go ahead, stand back, go ahead, do your thing, come on. Hey. All right, I see you. Next up, man, we want to honor Brother Robert Evans, 50 years. Robert Evans, if he's here, if you can stand. Okay. Oh, he's online. Shout out online. Y'all show him some love online. Brother Robert Evans, we thank you. We thank you. Happy 50 years. And then next, Sister Helen Smith. 51, 51 years, graduated 51 years ago, amen. And we got one more, y'all. Reverend, doctor, pastor, shepherd, Ivory L. Warner. Fifty years. Thank God for you. That's what I'm talking about. Man, 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 that's it. Congratulations to y'all. Congratulations to Prayer View and this long, rich history. Thank all those that came after y'all. Congratulations to y'all. Hey, Amen. can we give them just one more round of applause? <laughs> Swag champions, by the way. I'll give that, throw that in there. Throw that in there. Swag champions, by the way. <laughs> amen, amen. Y'all, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this. Uh, we're going to bring some people up here to just continue to bless us and bless this worship experience. Uh, reading from Matthew. Reading from Matthew chapter 6. Reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what, as to what you will eat or what you will drink nor for your body as to what uh, you will put on. Is not this life more than food? Is not the body more than clothing? Well, we're not just talking about that early, Sister Shay, early, we're just talking about not being so consumed with the materials of this world. Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow nor reap nor gather to barns, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all of his clothes, in all of his glory, clothed himself like one of these. Here's some good instructions. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and thrown away into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? <sighs> Sometimes we got to be reminded, right? It's us of such little faith. Do not worry then. What will you eat? What will you drink? Or what will you wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek these things, and their, high, and their heavenly fathers know that all, excuse me, know that you need all of these things. But, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all those things, the food, the clothing, the life, seek his kingdom and his righteousness. 
that money you worry about, that job you worry about. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness. That relationship you worry about, them folk tripping on you. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all, not some, all those things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow cares for itself. Each day has enough trouble. Amen? Amen. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Y'all, do me a favor and put your hands together for Shabbat vessels of praise.
Y'all, two things. One, I think one of the most powerful lines in the Bible is when Abraham is going to the hill of the mountain with the son Isaac. And Isaac is like, hold on, we're supposed to be sacrificing something. What's, how is this about to work out? And Abraham, with such conviction, says, God will provide himself a sacrifice. If that's not some crazy faith, I don't know what is. Amen? And second thing, second thing, um, man, God bless you, uh, Sister Mary Reed. See, mm, God has a way of protecting you in such a way to where all you can do is point back to him and say, God, if it had not been for you, just yesterday, Sister Mary we was in a terrible car accident. That was what she was involved in. Now, hold on, that's the car, but look, that's her. Y'all got to understand what we talk about around here. Yeah, that got problem. Body still showed up today because, see, when God got something on the inside of you, nothing can stop you from getting that out. So we got to pause because that's been us before. So while we thank God for what, they, what he did for her, we all can say, guess what? I was there too. I've been in that position too, amen? God, thank you. We thank God. As a matter of fact, God, we thank you right now. Father, we thank you right now because, God, you've been providing sacrifices for a long time, Father. God, you've been providing Jehovah Jireh in our life for a long time, God. So, God, we got, oh, God, we got to move on with this service. But, God, we got to pause and say, God, thank you. Because, Father, you've been providing for a long time. And, God, you've been protected for a long time. God, only you can cause damage to the car, but yet protect our body, Father. So we thank you, Father, for Sister Mary, Father, and, and keeping her safe, Father, and being with her, God, and still bringing her here today, God. And we pray, God, that whatever needs to happen, Father, 
it's already done. God, she has a journey, Father, through insurance and transportation, but God, it's already done. God, it's already done. So, Father, we can go ahead and shout right now for what you gonna do, because God, it's already done. God, thank you for using her as a reminder to all of us about just how good you are. Father, we love you. God, we thank you. And God, we worship you, Father. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. That's the name above all names, Father. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. It's by that name, God, we protect it from seen and unseen dangers. God, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. God, at that name, every single knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. God, it's in Jesus' name. God, it's in Jesus' name. God, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And God, wow, that ain't the only prayer request we got in this building, Father. God, it's some folk, God, going through some things, Father, right now. They need your hand, Father, right now. Father, they need your hand, God, right now. God, some of we ain't got time for the semantics. God, we need you right now. We need you to intercede, God, right now. You got folks sick that need your healing right now. You got folks stressed and worried. They need your peace, God, right now. Ah, God, they need you, Father. God, we need you right now. But God, who better to look to towards you, Father? Father, who better? Who else is able but you, God? God, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be really, really scary to have this need and not have a source. Oh, but God, thank you for being a very present help in the time of trouble. God, we need you right now. And God, I thank you. I'm thankful that we have you right now. God, we worship you. God, right now. God, we say hallelujah. God, right now. We say thank you. Right now. God, you gave us a testimony. Right now. God, help us not give up. Because we know that we're always living in a present tense of right now. Father, we love you. God, we thank you. God, we glorify you. Father, right now. Father, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's glorify God. Thank God. Best of praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Y'all direct your attention towards the news. Amen. Designed to educate and to promote the greater impact of God's mission. This is By The Way News Brief. On behalf 
from the BWFBC leadership team, we would like to sincerely thank the Emergency Preparedness Cross-Functional Team for their hard work and dedication to ensuring the safety of our members during the 2021 hurricane season. As a reminder, your Angel Tree gift is due today. If it's not available, please deliver to the church as soon as possible. The annual Christmas event is scheduled for 11 a.m. Saturday, December 11th at Frey Road. For questions, please contact Carlton Hubbard at 832-882-2937. Thanks in advance for your support. Israel is called the Holy Land because of its association with the birth, the ministry, the crucifixion, and the resurrection of Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah. Israel was named after Abraham's grandson and is often referred to as the promised land because God promised to give the land to the descendants of Abraham. And oh, what a gift. On May 10th through the 21st, 2022, you, along with the College of Biblical Studies, have an opportunity to experience this gift. The sights, the culture, the breathtaking landscape of the Holy Land Help make the Bible come alive in ways you never thought possible. So come with us on this tour as we adventure across the Sea of Galilee, commune at the Garden Tomb, take part in prayer at the Western Wayland Wall in Jerusalem, plus so much more. You want to be a part of this experience. Those who plan to travel to Israel Please confirm by calling the church office at 713-943-2215 by Monday, November 29th. The Holy Land. It's a spiritual experience that lives forever. We are currently looking for volunteers to serve on the Young Adult Ministry cross-functional team. If you are between 18 to 30, this is an awesome opportunity to work together with other young adults to deepen your relationship with God. Whether you are pursuing a degree, embarking on a career, or praying about your future, our hope is that young adults in all seasons of life will become disciples of Christ connect and empower each other and partner together for spiritual growth and kingdom impact. If you would like to respond to God's call to serve on the Young Adult Ministry cross-functional team, please contact Cassandra Hines at CassandraHines at gmail.com or the church office at 713-943-2215. You say, what's the commonality here? It's Zakati Cortez. 
Where there is hurt, healing is always possible. But we have to keep hope alive. And on December 5th, starting 5.30 p.m. in the sanctuary, Zaccardi Cortez will do just that. I know it don't look like it right now, but I want you to hold on for a little while until he gets it. God's gonna do it. Right before this 5.30 p.m. first Sunday concert, join us live in the parking lot at 3 p.m. as we present a dynamic Christmas play called Bethlehem Live. We're featuring our own By the Way Youth Choir and praise dancers. I believe that my God is a healer. Yes, he is. Oh, you don't have to go home after the first Sunday in December because we provide snacks and finger food. Now, with tickets starting at $10 per person for admission, you got to get your tickets to date. Hurt, hope, and healing. The first Sunday of December. And it all starts at 3 p.m. We'll see you there. This is the Ladies Happening on Bible Way Campus. I'm Laverne Johnson, and this has been Bible Way News. Amen, 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 amen. Folks, that's our God, and there's nothing our God cannot do. And he's doing great things. And it's happening here in this place in your time. But it happens with you. See, now it's time for us to rise up and move. And I am excited about what God is doing. We just had our leadership retreat. And I want to thank God for that and for what was revealed and where we're going. In fact, we're really looking at kingdom living with the right keys. For 2022, kingdom living with the right keys. And let me just tell you about keys. Keys are eternal principles that will never change. And if you can get the right key, 22 will open up for you windows of heaven that you won't have room enough to receive so I, so, I, so I just invite you to keep praying that we can do that folks this is our church and ain't, it's nobody going to come and do this for us we got to do this so I want to thank God for all the participants and all the leaders and they were able to do the objectives and goals for 2022 and we're looking for great things to happen but let me tell you what's dear on my heart. This is what's dear on my heart. In fact, let me get you to turn with me, please. Two verses. One is in um, Matthew 16, 19. And then the second verse is in John 14, beginning in verse 12. So let me just talk about Matthew because Jesus came to do something. And what we've got to do is glorify God. And how we're going to glorify God is in the verse. But it's good news in the verse. It's already done. That's what I want to point out to you. In that verse, he says, it's already done. He says, Peter, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth. Now watch the next words. Watch the next phrase shall have already been done. Then the next verse. Whatever you uh, loose on earth, it shall have already been done. It, it's, it's already done. It's done. It's done. And what I'm trying to say to you is that we want to walk into what's done. It ain't nothing you got to create. It's already done. All God needs for us to just to show up and do our part, but it's really done. Okay, look at the next verse, and that's in John, uh, uh, John 14 and verse 12, and uh, Jesus is saying, truly, 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 because he's, he's on his way back to the Father. And what he says is, the works that I've done, 
you shall do greater works. Not greater in quality, but greater in quantity. Because he never left the Israel land, but now we're all over the world. But then the next two verses says, now whatever you ask, I'll do it. I will do. I'm not, it's not, I will do it. And then that next verse says, if you ask anything in my name, it shall be done. But what I'm trying to tell you is already done. Let, 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 me, let me give you a key, a key example here. What if God was able to see that accident that Mary was in 2,000 years ago? And what if he saw the way it could happen? I, I, can, I mean, I can just see it in my imagination that he let it play out and, and said, no, 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 that's not going to do it. That's, that's, not, that's not one because she gets hurt in that one. Okay, so let's run another one. So, so, so what does the next one look like? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, that, that, but, but see, in that one, her encouragement would get damaged. Let's run this one right here where she's standing outside the car looking at it and it's, and it's wrecked. But she's looking at her and her God and her God has kept her through all of that way before she showed up. It was already done. And I'm telling you that whatever you plan on doing, it's already done. He said all you need is the key of faith. Without faith it's impossible to please God. But if you got the key of faith, Turn the key, and the windows of heaven will open. Beloved, in 2022, make sure you get your key. I forgot the most important part. I don't think he needs an introduction, but I'm learning to be very obedient. I wasn't planning on wearing this coat today. But my wife said, you need to wear that coat. And obedient as I am, I'm wearing this coat. With godly pride. See, I have to say that here in Bible way because, see, there's some sinful pride, but I, I got godly pride. So I want to thank God, but I want to introduce my friend, my brother, but most of all, my son. But he was God's son before he became my son. And God just led him to me for a minute here. And I thank God. He spoke on my appreciation, did a great job and did such a great job, he's back. So I, so I want to introduce to you, so right after, right after the choir, the next voice you will hear from, from Minister Rose. Thank you for your grace. Oh, but I'm grateful. Help me let go, oh Lord. At times I couldn't fall asleep. There was so much on my mind. Searching for that peace. The peace I could not find. I kneel down to pray, praying, help me please. He said I didn't have to cry, cause I'll provide all your needs and stop. 
soon as I stop worrying. Oh, when I let go. can't find my way and oftentimes I seem to struggle struggle from day to day I had to realize that it's not my battle it's not my battle to fight had to know if I put it in your hand and every So just let God, my sister, you can't handle it. So let God, oh, let go. And let God, let go. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, if you're happy and glad about it, 
If you know you didn't save yourself, you ought to stand to your feet and give God the glory. You ought to give him the praise. If you know you didn't make it here by your own power, if you know you didn't make it by your own strength, if he brought you through an accident, if he kept you from an accident, if you fell asleep behind the road but still made it home, somebody ought to tell the Lord thank you. It's good, it's good, it's good to be here today. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. It's good, it's good to be here, Bible way. It's good to be here. I want to thank God. I want to thank God for everything uh, that he's allowed us to experience thus far today. It's been a wonderful day. Um, uh, man, God has just been so good just here in this service. thank God. I thank God for this, uh, this preaching opportunity uh, that he's given. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for the ministry of Dr. Ivory Varner and the Varner family. I'm just so thankful. Um, and I know he has that gold jacket. We, we looking for that 50 uh, for preaching, for pastoring. We, we, I don't know, we're going to have to come up with some kind of jacket for that in, in about eight years. But we thank God for you. Uh, thank you for the call. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So grateful um, to the elders, the ministers, and deacons, uh, Sister Mary and the deaconesses. Um, we give God the glory for you to Bible way. It's so good to see you. Um, those who I've hugged, every time it, I, I'm here, it's so good to hug you and um, to see your smile even behind the mask. Uh, I'm so grateful uh, for that. To Brother Sean and the music ministry um, and all those who have done something today. Um, if you've done something today here behind the scenes or on the stage or down here, just raise your hand while the rest of us celebrate God using these youth and and Brian man I'm, I'm I'm Brian I'm so thankful for for God using you man I'm I'm mad at you though uh because w when I preach I try I try to hold back my shout but man you just messed up you messing up my throat man don't 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 do that no more <laughs> When I'm about to preach. Now, when Dr. Vaughn is preaching, <laughs> I got to save my voice. I got to save my voice. Um, my, my wife is here. Um, and I want to I wanna say hello to my wife. Wave at everybody. Y'all tell her hello. Amen. 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 Uh, on tomorrow, my wife and I, it's, it's 13 years, and we praise the Lord for 13 years. Hallelujah. Um, and and I, I thank God because he did it. I thank God for my dad and my mom watching that. Um, and I thank God for Dr. Vonner. All them times he talked about marriage, we were taking notes. Uh, so we thank God for that. Uh, let's get to the word. I know you're standing. I'm not going to make you stand long, but if the Holy Spirit has you stand later, then praise his name. We're going to shout anyhow. We're going to shout anyhow. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And then after that, I'll let you be seated. And I'm not going to take long on the scripture. It's going to be one verse. So I know, you, I know you're standing, but you'll be seated soon. 1 Timothy um, it's after Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Then it's First and Second Thessalonians. If you get to Second Timothy, you went too far. But it's there in the New Testament. 
uh, portion of your Bible. If that doesn't help, it's on page 844. Uh, if you got the same Bible as me. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 4, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for a Bible way. We thank you for Dr. Varner and Sister Mary, Lord. We thank you for all these youth who you use today to get your glory. Lord, now I pray, Lord, that they'll continue to serve and, and do kingdom work here and, and beyond. But Lord, I pray that they will also see as you continue to show me that, that, that this thing is serious and I've got to be a certain person if I'm going to be a Christian. I, I love to sing. I love to praise. I love to teach. I love to preach. But God, we got to live a certain way. And I pray right now that you will hold on to their mind and their heart and let them listen to what thus saith the Lord. It's your time, Lord. Show up and show out, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example of those who believe. I want to speak from the subject I'm different. Uh, young people, I want to see. I want to see where you're at. If young people, I know you got your mask on, but just shout with me. I'm different. Uh, one more time. I'm different. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, joyfully sharing the truth in love to God be the glory that that was the young folk I, I need somebody else that may not be young but God been good to you somebody that's not young but God been good just shout out I'm different <laughs> young folk they got y'all beat young folk they know it they know it young folk one more time where my young folk at shout I'm different amen amen, amen. amen. I'm different Tim and I went shoe shopping this past week. We went down to the outlet and, and Tam got hooked up. Uh, no longer can she say I don't have any new shoes. She, she got the hookup at the outlet. But before we were headed home, she wanted a drink that, that got some medicine in it. It's it, it, they call it a medicine ball, I think. Y'all who go to Starbucks, y'all know about it. Uh, just, just 25 yards behind, they, they know about them drinks at Starbucks. She said, I want to go to Starbucks. I want a medicine ball. But on the way to Starbucks, Tam, you remember what happened? There was an ice cream stand. And, and, and there was a lady as we're approaching, who says free samples, free samples, free samples. We're headed to Starbucks, but somebody tries to stop our progress and offer free ice cream. My wife says, I hope I don't get in trouble, I want some ice cream. She wanted a free sample, and that's okay, but I was about to pay for some Starbucks. And, and y'all know how these free samples work. They, they come in these small little cups. And, and y'all know they give you a, a little spoon that's smaller than your pinky. And they want to give you this free sample because they want to stir up your taste buds. Uh, so you'll pull out your wallet and pay for a bigger cup and get a bigger spoon. 
And it's okay that she wanted the free sample, but she had to make a decision. Good taste or what's good for me. Young people, God wants to take you somewhere. It's not too far off. It's good for you. He wants you to have a life full of joy, a life full of peace. And God wants to give you eternity in heaven. And guess what? He's already paid for it by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, you young folks said, I want to be a Christian. You said, I, I want to be saved. And sometimes, if you're going to do this journey, you got to walk past some free stuff. Uh, because the free stuff tastes good for a moment. And the idea is, I want to give you something that's not free, the enemy said. Sometimes, you got to say no when everybody else says yes. But somebody's whispering, free sample, free sample, free sample. Somebody wants you to forget about the promises of God and the blessings of God. The devil, the world, and your flesh wants you to live like everybody else. And stop by the free stand that has free ice cream. Uh, but once you take the free sample, the enemy wants to hypnotize you so you'll buy the bigger cup and get the bigger spoon. The free cup turned into an expensive cup. God is saying, I paid for an even bigger cup. I paid for you to go to heaven. I paid for you to be my child. I paid for you to live holy. Don't stop at the free sample. Keep on walking. Everybody else, young people, is going to follow the crowd. Everybody wants to go to heaven. But heaven is for people who want to live like Jesus while on earth. Somebody say, I'm different. Paul is writing to his young son in the ministry, Timothy. And, and the scholars believe that Timothy may be probably about in his 30s when he received this letter from Paul. And while we don't know his exact age, there's some older folk in the church who got a problem with him being too young. He's young and the pastor of the church at Ephesus. And older people were the ones at the time in this culture who were considered to have all the wisdom and all the experience. But by the way, I've lived long enough to know that you can be old and foolish. There's some 70-year-olds acting like teenagers. There's some 60-year-olds still stopping by every free sample. Age doesn't translate to wisdom fearing God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, the culture looked down on Timothy's age. And Dr. John MacArthur says, if Timothy is going to get the respect, he has to earn it. Uh, but Timothy, thankfully, has been hanging out with Paul for a long time. So he has the experience. And before he met Paul, he also learned a lot from his mother and his grandmother. And I got good news for you. If God can use a young Timothy to pastor a church, he can use a young you. You got to find some good people to hang out with. You got to get some good, godly experience. And then you got to get the word in you and understand that if God is for you, who can be against you? Who can make a, 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 straight, a straight way that God has made crooked? If God has made it crooked, who can make it straight? What, what God has done, can't nobody stop that. I, I like how Michelle Williams put it a long time ago. She said, when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When, when God has something, young people, for you to do, can't nobody 
stop that. But you got to make up in your mind, I'm different. Uh, young people, let me pause real quick because there's some people in the house that may not be young. Uh, there's some people in the house that the age may not be an issue. Uh, somebody may have an impediment or a, a handicap or somebody has something that looks like it's going to stop them from getting anything accomplished. Uh, there, there may be somebody in the house that has a bad past. And, and, and you, you, you think that your past may stop God from getting something accomplished in your life. But you can fill in the blank. Whatever it is that suits your case, don't let them look down on you because of your blank. Whatever that is, don't let them look down on you because of that. This is good even if you're 80. He's too old to sing. He's too old to preach. Or he's too old to serve in the usher ministry. Now, as long as you can drive the symbolic car without wrecking it, then God says, I still can use you. does not stop God. God can use an old Moses or he can use a young Mary. God decides who he wants to use and when. Our job is to say, no matter our age, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I do what you say do. Use me, Lord. To show somebody the way and enable me to say, my storage is empty and I am available to you. Are you still with me? Somebody say, I'm different. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Let no one look down on your youthfulness. Be mindful. Be mindful. Let no one look down on you because of your age, which would suggest that, that there's people in the house that may try to look down on you. Uh, it would suggest that, yes, you're a young person and you're serving in ministry and you're doing well, but somebody still may look down on you. Be mindful that people will check you out and watch you. Here's the pastor of the church, Timothy. And the apostle Paul is telling Timothy, don't let them do it. That there's good news, and that is even though they may try to look down on you for whatever reason, God says you can do something about it. Be mindful of the fact that somebody is watching you. Uh, get used to it. It's part of the Christian walk. C can I help you out? Uh, you watch other folk and see if they're real. Uh, you watch the pastor. You look at the elder. You watching the deacons. And if he's fake, you're gone. And the same thing you're doing, checking other folk out, guess what? Somebody's watching you too. Be mindful that they will check you out to see if you're real. Uh, you are not the only one who wants to know who's real and who's fake. Uh, young people can spot a person, a fake person, from a mile away, but they fail to realize somebody's checking them out too. Be mindful. You're young. You're a Christian. Guess what? The world is watching you. They're watching you at school. They're watching you at work. They're watching you on the basketball court, on the track. They're watching you how you walk, how you talk. They're looking at you. Are you who you say you are? 
I, I've come to let you know that the world can spot a fake person too. Be mindful. People don't need a reason to look down on you. Don't give them any extra ammunition. Instead, let them see what a real Christian looks like. Let them see that young people can have fun. Young people can go out and do things with each other and stay holy. Now, certainly, we don't do what we do to please people. Our aim is to serve God, and God is watching us. We know this, but there are things that we must do or not do and keep people in mind. My actions could cause someone to do well or to fail. And God gives believers the ability and the permission to inspect my fruit. Y'all can look at me and check my fruit out. And what this does is it causes me to stay focused. It causes me to make sure I'm lined up with the word of God. It causes me to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But the reality is people are watching me. And if I cause somebody to stumble, then I've sinned too. We are not perfect, my brothers and sisters. Uh, we will make mistakes, but we cannot live a lifestyle of willful, continual, unconfessed sin. Listen to what people are saying today. I'm going to do what I want to do, and can't nobody stop me. I want it, I'm going to get it. Only God can judge me. They don't even realize what they're saying. Yeah, you're right, he will judge you. But God says we can inspect fruit. We can make a holy, righteous judgment of people. And they, these people are saying, I'm going to go to church, but I'm going to live how I want to live. I'm going to look holy for an hour and a half, but then I'm going to do what I want for the rest of the week. My brothers and sisters, that's not a church. Uh, uh, that's not a saint. That's not the church. That's just the church goer. It's like putting on a uniform, but not putting in the work. You putting on the label, you're a Christian, but you're not living like it. If I don't live right, I got to get it right. Be mindful. If you made a public declaration that you're going to live for Jesus, somebody is watching you. Somebody wants to know if you really are who you say you are. Somebody's watching you sing in the choir stand. But they just saw you cussing on Facebook. Somebody saw you lead the saints down the aisle and usher them to their pew. But will we lead them to Jesus? Somebody sees your praise dance on Sunday, but you were just shaking at the party on Friday. If I don't live right, but I come in here and I jump and I shout, that may not be worship, that may just be exercise. <laughs> that, that may not be worship, that may just be me getting my cardio. Are y'all praying with me? When I'm running and shouting up in here, when I'm running down the aisle, I got to make sure I walk right when I get out there. Paul is saying, don't give them a reason to look down on you. They will try. Somebody is in the back saying, why does it matter? what somebody else thinks about me. Uh, you're an ambassador of the kingdom. Uh, uh, so that souls will be saved. So that saints will be encouraged. And that so God will get all the glory. Somebody shout, I'm different. Let no one look down on your euphemism. But rather, I'm in the text, in speech. Conduct, love, faith, and purity. 
be mindful, but also be like Christ. I want to highlight two things Jesus would do in his earthly ministry. He, he, he would hang out with the Father, and he would be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You cannot pull off this list that's there in verse 12 without hanging out with the Father. You, you can't pull it off unless the Holy Spirit empowers you. Let's look at, let's look at the Gospels. You do know that Jesus was 12 years old and he was in the temple. He was listening to the teachers and asking them questions at 12. And the text says everybody who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. Uh, you remember the story? His parents, they left and went home. They took the long journey home and somebody said, hold up, where's Jesus? Jesus was in the temple. And they make that long journey back three days later, and they find Jesus at the temple. And his parents were anxious. And Jesus says, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I would be in my father's house? Uh, you got to be like Christ, that when everybody else has left the temple, you're still at the temple. Your heart. Your mind, your body is still at the temple. You take the temple with you. Do you not know 1 Corinthians says you are a temple of God. And God dwells in you. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Everywhere we go, we take the temple with us. You can be, you cannot be different. If you're not doing different, you, you cannot be like Christ if you're not getting away and hanging out with the Father. Jesus at 12, 12 years old, stayed at the temple, and then when he got older, he, he would find a secret place and hang out with his Father. If your speech is going to be right, if your actions are going to be right, if you're going to love others, if you're going to believe that God will do what he said he would do, if you're going to be pure in mind, right. pure in your heart, your actions, and your body, you got to hang out with God because it's really his body. Yeah. Don't let them look down on you. And the way you stop that is by living right. You, you know what's right, young people. You've been taught. You know what's wrong. Do right and be like Jesus. But if Jesus took the time to hang out with the Father, shouldn't we? If you're going to do what's right, you got to read your Bible. You got to put the phone down and pray. You got to get off the computer and worship. You got to take a break from YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. And you got to say, God, it's me and you. I, I'm, I'm just declaring and letting you know I was young reading my Bible because I was taught. And I'm teaching you right now like Bible Way teaches you. Spend once a day in the Word and, and get, get fed this Word. This Word is life to you. This life is strength to you. This life will, make, will turn your life around. This is life. And God says, I want you to hang out with me. If this if, if Jesus hung out with the Father and, and he also hung out with this special somebody that was on the inside, then certainly we should. There was somebody on the inside while Jesus was pulling out miracles, raising dead and healing the sick. He is the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ was empowered by the Holy Ghost. It's in your Bible. Watch Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Isaiah predicted that the Spirit would rest on Jesus. Luke says the Holy Spirit came upon Mary for the virgin birth of Jesus. Luke tells us Jesus was full of the Spirit when he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Hebrews says Jesus died 
and offered himself to God through the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was on the cross, Holy Spirit on the inside. When Jesus got up, Holy Spirit on the inside. If you going to be different, you need the Holy Ghost. I'm different because of the Holy Ghost. I can't do it myself. I can't pull this thing out by myself. When I'm playing basketball and somebody cussing and fussing and trying to fight me on the court, I can't do this by myself. I'm under the control of the Holy Spirit. Like a drunk person, a drunk person is under the control of the wine or the alcohol. But God says that's be that's dissipation, but you and I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the only way, young woman. That's the only way, young man, that you can be pure while everybody else dirty. Somebody say I'm different. I'm different. Let no one look down on your youthfulness. But rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Here it is. It's in your word. Show yourself an example of those who believe. Be mindful. Be like Christ. And finally, be a leader. Young people, be a leader. If you're going to be different, if you're going to be all that God called you to be, if you're going to rise above the culture and rise above society, you cannot follow the crowd. You're either going to be a Christian or you're going to be like everybody else, but you cannot be an example of a believer if you're living like the world. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Young people, young adults, older people, I don't care who you are. If you didn't make the decision, you ain't going to be able to pull it off. Make the decision today I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm tired of living like I'm living. Today I want to be different. They can't look down on you if you're living like an example of a believer. Uh, but First Peter says, who can harm you if you do what's good? But if you suffer for doing for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. By the way, let me just accept it. Everybody will not like me. Everybody will not invite me. Some people will smile in my face and talk about me. Young people, you got to accept it. You got to make up in your mind, I'm different. It's not easy to always be different. It's hard to not fit in with the crowd. Matter of fact, in and of myself, by myself, it's impossible. But if you're saved, then God has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. In other words, God has equipped you to be a leader. God has equipped you to say yes when everybody else is scared. Look at young David. Look at young David, his older brothers. And all of Israel was afraid to take on the giant named Goliath. David said, everybody else, even the king, everybody else is scared. I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to be an example. You remember young David took five smooth stones. But it only took one. And down goes Goliath. Don't let him look down on you. Be a leader. Say no when they say yes. Y'all remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
King Nebuchadnezzar had a concert long before Travis Scott. When the king's music played, almost everybody bowed. And the, and the world has been bowing down to the world's music ever since. But the music played and everybody, almost everybody, bows down. But three Hebrew boys said, we won't bow. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But if not, we still won't bow. They were thrown in the fire, three youth in the fire. But the king saw four, four bodies. And the boys came out unharmed, undamaged, and unaffected. Bible way, whatever trouble you get in for doing the right thing, we serve a God who is able to get us out the fire. Ah, yeah. But if not, we still won't bow. I need about 10 young folk who made up in their mind I'm going to be different because the suffering of the present world is not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed. I just want to declare today, I'm different. I'm different. I'm different. Daniel was a teenager. The disciples were young. Jeremiah was a teenager. And Genesis tells us Joseph was 17 years old when he had a dream and he was sold into slavery. Mary was a teenager. I can go on and on about young people God uses. But here's Jesus at the age of 30. Did you see Jesus? He's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. He's making a way out of no way. Did you hear about Jesus? There was blind folk. He came in contact with them, and now they can see. There was a man who was demon possessed, but Jesus showed up. And here's Jesus, and here the man is now in his right mind because Jesus showed up. I'm not done because Jesus, at the age of 33, he said, I'm about to finish my work. At 33, did you see him? He was nailed in his right hand. He was nailed in his left hand. He hung his head and he died. Didn't he die? I said he died. Didn't he die? Ah, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. All power. So you and I could stand here today and declare I'm different. But I'm different. I can't be you. I can't be the crowd. I can't be like everybody else. I'm different. I apostrophe M space bar. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I'm different. He called me his child. I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm different. I'm a friend of God. I'm a child of God. He formed me in my mother's womb. I'm an alien. I'm a stranger. I'm different. This for you, Hurtis. 
like you're living. You're, you're sick and tired of, of following the crowd. And, and you got to make up in your mind right now. I'm different. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformers. More then meets the eye. You got to make up in your mind, I'm going to be different. Bad company corrupts good morals. In other words, older people be different. Come out from among them and be ye separate. In other words, be different. It's time, y'all, for the people of God to make up in their mind, I can't be like everybody else no more. I I've been washed in the blood. I've been saved. I've been cleansed. I've been delivered. I've been set free. I can't go back to that stuff no more. The Bible says God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If you say you have fellowship with him, but walk in the darkness, you lie, the Bible says. And the truth is not in you. We got to make up in our mind, I'm going to be different. Old folk used to say, they used to say that uh, I looked at my hands. And, 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 and they looked new. And, and they said, I looked at my feet. And, and they do too. They weren't talking about their physical hand. But they were saying, I'm different. There's been a wonderful change over me. And I'm not perfect, but, but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not who I used to be. And the challenge today is to stand up and declare I'm different. Everybody can't shout on it yet because we are different. Everybody can't be excited about this because we different. Everybody can't get happy about this, but we different. And we got to declare I'm going to be different. I don't care if I got to stand by myself, but I got some other folks standing with me who made a decision. I'm different. We got to be different. God bless right now let me get all my children to stand all my children in the house please stand all of my children in the house please stand yeah 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 all my children please stand please stand please stand wow wow
Brian, you don't mind us having a pep rally, do you? Okay, please come. Oh, we're gonna have a pep rally. And I don't know what Brian gonna say in between. But when he points at you young folks, I want you to say, I'm different. And I don't care if you take the, if you take the top off the building, it don't matter. But I want to let you know that until you believe you're different, you won't be different. But if you believe I'm different, then you're going to be different. Brian. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Uh, if you can do me a favor, if you can put 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 12, that verse up. Yeah, 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 yeah. My young people. First of all, y'all look good. Yes. Can we just. Yes. Y'all look, y'all look good. Yes. We got to just first pause and acknowledge that. Uh, and this is what we going to do. Uh, we going we gonna, to uh, do responsive reading. So just yeah, repeat after yeah. me. And as confidently uh, and as loud as you can, I want yeah. you to re repeat after me. All right? As confidently, as loud as you can. And one thing about this church body. This is a safe space. Safe space. This is a safe space. And I say that because I do uh, reside on a weekly basis in the schoolhouse. And we can speak personally that sometimes not every space that we encounter is safe. But this is a safe space. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I want you to just repeat after me. All right. Uh, first Timothy chapter four, verse two. Here we go. Let no one. There you go. Come on, young people. One more time. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Show yourself an example of those who believe. Now, old people, I want you to make some noise for these young people, because they got to know that they got a safe space here at Bible Way Fellowship Baptist Church. They got to know that this is a journey. Now, to my season folk, have a seat, y'all, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. To my season folk, young people, please stand one more time, one more time. To my season folk, stay, stay seated, season folk. Yeah, young people, stand. Young kids, stand, kids, stand. I'm sorry, kids, stand. There you go. And I'm going to say this and hope I don't upset nobody. No, you won't. I got you back. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, right. Let's not act like we weren't once young. Because that makes the space unsafe. So we got to balance thanking God for where he has brought us to, but not acting as if we ain't ever been there before. Because that makes the space unsafe. 
Amen. Amen. But when we see, when we see our young people conducting themselves not in a way that's going to lead to long-term productivity, we got to balance accountability and grace at the same time. So we got to definitely, uh, our young people, we cannot conduct ourselves in uh, I am who I am and only God can judge me. But to our seasoned folk, we got to balance accountability with grace. And we can go a whole lot further if we can say, hey, I was once that too. Amen? So that's what we're going to do. Everybody. Amen. We're going to, re everybody, repeat after me. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and purity. Show yourself an example to those who believe. Say, I'm different. 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 Now go ahead and praise your God. Seated. As a matter of fact, yeah, you may be seated. If our leaders can come forward at this time, if our leaders can come forward at this time. Because we want to open the doors of the church. Because some folk need to get free. So if you're looking for salvation, if you just need prayer, because HD said it, man, this journey can be taxing and lonely. So if you need prayer, and if you want to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful church, man, come forth at this time. Changed them. Yeah. Yeah. God, thank you.
Leaders, thank you. Leaders, thank you. Can we thank God for HD? <laughs> Minister Rose, thank you for the message on this morning. Beloved, I want to thank God for the service of these youth. I, I want to thank God. I also want to thank Loretta and her team. They have done a wonderful job as they always do. My heart goes out for these young people. Because I know the world they come into. And it's not a good world at all. And what we've got to do is insulate, not isolate. You cannot take your children out of this world. But you can insulate them in the world. To whatever's out there, it won't get in here. So I need you praying for our young people. And you heard me last week, I was trying to get a group of people that will come together and seriously talk about a youth center so we can make some youth that are different. They got to be different. But they can't be different without our help. We need some people, this is cross-functioning, uh, team and basically so that we can create the programs necessary to be different but we can also create a safe place a safe place and we've got the means and the resources to be able to do that but we're going to need your help Cassandra will you stand up for a minute I know I talked to you about singing, but I ain't going to get you to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to thank Cassandra for uh, uh, heading up our cross-function team. We've got a number of cross-function teams. And uh, if, you, if God leads on your heart to be a part of the team, there's nothing mandatory, please get with her, and she'll tell you what needs to happen next. All right, thank you, Cassandra. Now, that's all I need to say. Amen. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Y'all, 70 more tickets. December 5th, Hurt, Hope, and Healing 2. December 5th, we have uh, the Bethlehem Live, the play with our youth, and then 530, we have Zaccardi Cortez that's going to bless us. Y'all, 70 more tickets. Go out there, get your ticket if you have not got one. Grab two, three, four, five, sell them to help bless this uh, event. There's a lot of people working behind the scenes to make this event possible. Let's honor their work and their efforts. It's only $10, amen? amen. Man, please go outside and get that ticket as soon as this service is over, all right? Amen, amen. Can we please show some love to our streaming audience? Thank y'all for worshiping with us on this morning. We hope that you enjoyed the worship experience. We will see you next week. Amen. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Amen.